Hello and welcome, I'm Askar Sherlif with the latest news from Kazakhstan. Employees of Kepel Kazakhstan, the producer of steelworks for the developer of the world's largest oil field Kashagan, are striking for already five days. 300 protesters complain about low wages and poor working conditions. The information about the strike has been carefully concealed by the local authorities and only five days later the news of events in Aktau was leaked to the press. <laughs> Employees of the company Keppel Kazakhstan went on strike in Aktau, the oil-rich region of the country. About 300 protesters complain about meager salaries and demand to equalize their pace with that of the foreign employees, accusing contractors in discrimination. I'm a welder working together with welders from Bangladesh. They get paid up to $1,500, while I receive only about $300. To make $500, locals have to work on Saturdays and Sundays without day-offs. Keppel Kazakhstan produces steelworks for the developers of the Kashagan oil field, one of the largest deposits in the world. Apparently, the company's output is always in demand and the profits are constantly growing. At the same time, workers complain about poor working conditions. For instance, only one shower works out of 15. Yes, we do have some problems, but the company is trying to fix everything, including the showers. The strike of the workers continues for already five days. The talks with the company's management and regional prosecutors did not produce any results. The Minister of Labor and Social Protection intends to deal with the situation. I am aware of the situation. In the afternoon, I and my deputy will fly to Aktau to examine the issue. Meanwhile, the authorities of Mangistau also attempted to resolve the conflict. The regional leadership, in collaboration with the local prosecutor's office, established a special commission to examine the complaints of the workers. The strikers, though, do not plan to return to work until all results of the investigation will be made known. A construction worker from Astana forced his company to partially repay salary debts through some extreme protest actions. Biri Kambaraliev became the third person to climb a tower crane looking for justice. The protest currently held in a police station was paid 30% of the debts and the rest will be delivered in 10 days. Social self-protection is the new model of behavior for people with no hope but with a desire to find fairness. Just as hunger strikes no longer seen as effective, protesters begin climbing tower cranes. I will not climb down until I get paid. I do not ask for something that doesn't belong to me. Just give me my money. I have not seen a penny since winter. This is already the third case of a tower crane protest with a demand to return debts. Kultana Tabulova has pioneered this type of extreme protest actions. She demanded to return her $170,000 owed for failing to deliver cement. It worked and now Biri Kambaralif uses the same method. <laughs> So far, they paid only 30% of the debt and promised to return the rest within 10 days. After solving his financial issues, Kambarali was detained by the police for two days. Meanwhile, an international conference, Social Wealth in Global Crisis, was opened in Astana's five-star Rixus Hotel. Kazakh Minister of Social Protection Gulshara Abdikalikova remains vague about the issues of tower crane protests. Specific issues should be viewed each on their own merits, while this forum reviews our work in general and sets future plans to solve other problems. Participants of the conference claim that people in Kazakhstan are among the most protected citizens in the world. Strangely, not everyone knows about it. Instead of organizing protest actions, workers should simply appeal to their labor inspector, as our labor and administrative codes provide that the extensive contraction of payment is punished by the administrative responsibility and then criminal responsibility. There is no wonder that the president has already become a tendency. People who have nothing to lose use extreme measures by climbing tower cranes. Meanwhile, state officials are continuing to praise the high level of social protection, which apparently can only be felt on the top of a crane. People's Democratic Movement Independence Protection, which unites more than 50 public organizations, democratic and oppositional parties, youth associations and independent print media in Kazakhstan, wrote an open letter to citizens of the country and initiated the collection of signatures against the customs union. 
The authors of the message say that Kazakhstan's joining of the customs union and common economic space starting July 1st will lead to the loss of the country's political independence and also will damage domestic economy. The letter was signed by almost 100 representatives of Kazakhstan's democratic community. The document calls upon every citizen of the country to exercise the constitutional rights to express a civic position. After collecting a million signatures, the document will be sent to presidents of Kazakhstan and Russia. Belarus protects its interests and therefore remains neutral. We, on the other hand, as usual, follow Nazarbayev and blindly believe his lies. There is a pattern, common border, single currency and a union. At this rate, the parliament may quite simply exhaust its ability to make decisions. We fear that the Russian state parliament will begin interfering with our strategic plans. More observers point out that President Nazarbayev still has not vetoed the infamous bill on the leader of nation. On June 8th, the unregistered party Alga held a roundtable discussing preparations for the possible referendum on the early termination of Nur Sultan Nazarbayev's presidency. The fact that the president did not sign the bill on the leader of the nation means little since he did not veto it as well. The decline was not formally submitted to the Constitutional Council. Most likely this is done on purpose as there is a provision in the Constitution that even unsigned by the president's bill could come into force. This means that the bill will become the law approximately on June 13. After all, a month prior it, it was approved by both chambers of the parliament. What we see now is the juggling of legislation and political flattery chosen by the president. He seems to say that he will not sign the bill, but it will automatically become a law a month later. This flirtation does not change anything and only aggravates the situation. A referendum could change the situation, but even the opposition believes it should have been done earlier. I see no direct link between a referendum and the law on the leader of nation. Many believe that since the president did not sign the bill, there was no sense of holding the referendum. In my view, the idea of the referendum was indirectly related to the law, as initially it was just a news break. The referendum should be held now because nothing really changed. I am convinced that the referendum is needed and we have the right to hold it in accordance with the Constitution, especially since the law on the leader of the nation is not supported by people at all. For now, observers have nothing left to do but complain and blame the parliament and flattery. At the same time, leaders of the party Alga made another initiative. They want the president not only to resign but also to dissolve the parliament. Alga members believe this is the only way to save the country's image in the eyes of the world community. Mukhtar Jakishov's attorney Nurlan Beysikayev reports that the second criminal case against his client has been submitted for the investigation to the National Security Committee of Astana. Jakishov, the former head of Kazatomprom, was sentenced to 14 years of imprisonment during the first uranium trial. On Monday, Mukhtar Jakishov's attorney Nurlan Beysikayev was planning to finalize the appeal complaint with his client. However, the lawyer was not allowed inside the waters, according to the employee of the National Security Committee. The attorney's name was not on the clearance list provided by the Sararka District Court. The defender was led into the ward some time later, but Beysikayev still intends to complain about the matter to the Attorney General, City Court and National Security Committee. Before this incident, I never had any problems visiting Mukhtar Jakishev, and the court never required such notifications to let me in. In a conversation with acting head of the detention facility, he admitted that it was their fault, and only after that they allowed me to enter. I visited my client last night and this morning. 